In this example, we're going to be pricing a bond based off the term structure of interest rates. What I've done here is plotted the spot rates for different maturities. So these are the um, these are the rates based off of bullet bonds. So for this one right here with a with a year equal to four, that means a bullet bond or a zero coupon bond that has a maturity of four years has an annual interest rate of 7%. Now note that these are not uh, APRs with semi-annual compounding periods. We're simplifying and just saying this is a 7% per year interest rate. So in this example, we're going to start off by pricing a four-year 4% 4 coupon bond with a face value of $100. So the first thing I did was I drew a timeline. And that's what we have right here. So with a 4% coupon rate bond with a face value of $100 and four years to maturity, we're going to have three coupon payments equal to $4. And then in the fourth year, we're going to have that final coupon payment of $4 plus the returning of our the face value of that bond. For convenience, uh, which will become obvious why I'm doing this later, I've also labeled each period A, B, C, and D. So when pricing a bond based off the term structure of interest rates, we discount each cash flow based on the appropriate interest rate for the horizon of that cash flow. So for this one year, cash flow or that first year cash flow of four dollars we discount it at four percent by one period we discount it at four percent for one period because um, the interest rate on a one-year bullet bond this is based on the term structure of interest rates is four percent for the second cash flow of four dollars which happens at year two we do the same thing and we discount it two periods at 5% because the appropriate interest rate for um, a cash flow that happens at two years is 5%. This is based off the term structure of interest rates. We do this for the third cash flow of $4 and the fourth cash flow of $4, discounting them based off the interest rates appropriate for the horizon. At the end, once we discount all of these cash flows and add them all up, we find that the price of the bond is $90.17. So the next part of this example is to find the uh, forward rates for each period um, uh, starting uh, one, uh, one year in the future, two years in the future, and three years in the future. So with my notation, this is the forward rate um, starting one period in the future and continuing on for one period. This is going to correspond to period B on that timeline. Um, to find the forward rate for um, two, two years forward, that's good for one year, which corresponds to C on this timeline up here. Well, with our notation, this is the forward rate starting two periods in the future, continuing on for one period. The same thing applies for period D. Now remember to find the forward rate, um, and we'll just start off with F11. We have two strategies. One strategy is to invest in a, in a single bond that spans the entire period. So this bond, this zero coupon bond, would be a two-year bond. Based off of the um, term structure of interest rates, the appropriate interest rate for a two-year bullet bond is 5%. And we're going to get that for two periods. So we compound that 5% twice. The alternative strategy is to invest in a one-year bond today. That bond is going to have a yield of 4%. And then once that bond pays off, we're going to have a we're going to roll over those proceeds into another one-year bond. We don't know what that interest rate is today, but we have expectations of what that interest rate will be today based off expectations theory.
Remember, if two strategies have the same risk and the same payoffs, then they have to have the same total return over that window. So we do this for um, to find F11, and we find that the we expect the interest rate on a one-year bond starting in one year to be 6.01%. We do the same thing to find the forward rate for a one-year bond that starts in two years. We expect that bond to have a yield of 8.03%. This corresponds to period C on our timeline. And finally, the forward rate we expect for um, a one-year bond starting in three years and continuing on for one, we expect that to have a yield of 10.06%. Once again, this corresponds to period D on our cash flow timeline. So the next part of this uh, example is asking uh, to find the expected real interest rates for each one period in the future. That is, we're going to find what we expect the real interest rates to be for period B, C, and D on our cash flow timeline. Well, the thing we need to know here is that the expected nominal interest rate, this is our forward rates, so this is our forward rate for each period, minus the expected inflation, which in this problem we're given is 2%, a constant 2%. So the forward rate for each period minus expected inflation for that one period will equal the expected real interest rate for that period. Well, we found out that F11, uh, we expect the spot interest rate starting in one year and continuing on for one year is going to be 6.01%. We subtract off expected inflation of 2%, and we get a expectation of real interest rates of being 4.01%. We do the same procedure for period C. We have the F21, that is the forward rate, two periods in the future, continuing on for one period. So we expect the real interest rate over that period to be 6.03%. And finally, um, over period D on our cash flow timeline, we expect the real interest rate to be 8.06%. Now, the reason we found um, these real interest rates because um, is because this is going to be an intermediate step. So assume that, suppose that immediately after purchasing, purchasing the bond, that the market expectations of the inflation rate decrease to a constant 1%. So the millisecond after you buy that bond, inflation expectations in the future change. So we can still pretend that we're at time zero in our uh, cash flow timeline. And we're going to construct a new uh, term structure of interest rates based on this change in the inflation rate. But we're going to do this step by step. So we're going to find what our new nominal forward rates are. And we're going to operate under the assumption that expectations of real interest rates have not changed. Now, uh, just rearranging that previous relationship between real interest rates, inflation, and expected nominal interest rates. Well, we found out the real interest rates, or our expected real interest rates um, in the previous section. We have new inflation expectations, which are 1%. And when we add those two together, we'll get the expected nominal interest rate. So the expected real interest rate over period B is 4.01% new expectations of inflation over that period B is 1%. So our new uh, forward rate over that period, period B, so F11, is going to be 5.01%. We do this to find the forward rate for period C and period D. And now these are our new forward rates based off of the uh, new expectations of inflation. So the next part of this is 
what do we expect the new term structure of interest rates to be? We're finding this out because we're going to be pricing the bond um, under these new uh, inflation expectations. So I've drawn the uh, a new timeline for period B, period C, and period D. Um, what we're doing here is in, uh, constructing those that new term structure of interest rates, but we're doing it one year in the future. Now remember that one year in the future, um, our forward rates, at least for that first year, are going to become our new spot rates over period B. So over period B, if expectations theory holds exactly, a one-year bond should have a interest rate of 5.01%. This is if expectations theory holds exactly. Now, the to find the appropriate rate to discount a two-year cash flow, we need to know what the appropriate yield on a two-year zero-coupon bond is. So remember with expectations theory that two different strategies have to have the same return. So to find the yield, the one yield that compounded two periods, so if we were going to invest in a two-year bond, it would be the one interest rate that span these two periods. The total return of that, that two-year bond is going to be 1 plus R2 squared. We're compounding whatever this interest rate is here twice. Well, under expectations theory, this strategy, this longer-term strategy, has to be equal to the strategy of investing in a one-year bond over period B and reinvesting in another one-year bond over period C. Well, we know what the spot rate over, five, er, over period B is. That's 5.01%. We also have expectations of what the yield will be on a one-year bond starting in one year. That is, our expectations of uh, the yield over period C. That's 7.03%. So the total return from the, the strategy of investing in two one-year bonds, one after the other, is going to be this 1.0501 multiplied by the 1.0703. When we do some algebra, we can find that the one interest rate uh, that solves this equation is 6.01%. So this is what the annual yield on a two-year zero-coupon bond uh, what we expect that to be. We do that same procedure for um, to find the appropriate yield on a three-year bullet bond starting in one year. And this is all our expectations. So one strategy is to invest in a three-year bullet bond at R3. So that would be the one interest rate over these three periods. That would be the annual yield on a three-year bullet bond. And the alternative strategy would be to invest in that two-year bullet bond that we just figured out what the annual yield was for two periods, and then reinvesting in another one-year bond that starts in two years. Well, the total return of this alternative strategy is the 6.01% compounded twice, and then reinvesting that in a one-year bond starting in two years, which corresponds to period D on our timeline. We have expectations of what the yield will be on that bond, and that's 9.06%. So when we solve for R3, we get that the appropriate rate to discount cash flows at a three-year horizon is 7.02%. So now over here, we've actually reconstructed the term structure of interest rates based on these new inflation expectations of a 1% constant inflation per year. The next part of this problem is to reprice the bond based off our new term structure of interest rates. So our new term structure of interest rates is going to be based on um, or what we just found. So with a one-year horizon, the cash flow is supposed to be 
um, uh, or sorry, the interest rate, the appropriate interest rate is supposed to be 5.01% to discount that first cash flow. So remember on this timeline, we only have three cash flows because one year has elapsed. So we discount the 5.01, or sorry, we discount this cash flow by 5.01%, the second cash flow by 6.01%, and the third cash flow, that terminal cash flow, by 7.02%. When we do this, we find that the price, the appropriate price for that bond, what we expect that to be in one year, is $92.22. The final step of this problem is to calculate the holding period return of our bond. So we know the price that we'll be able to sell the bond, or what we expect to be able to sell the bond in one year, and that's $92.22. We know what we can buy it at today. This is that very first step in this problem where we found the pr appropriate price of the bond under our old expectations of inflation is $90.17. And we have received one additional coupon payment, or um, that first coupon payment right there, uh, corresponds to the coupon payment that happens at the original year one. So uh, we have price we can sell it at, at price we bought it at, plus that one coupon, divided by the price we bought it at, and we find that the holding period return is 6.7%.